Good morning, everybody, and welcome back into another episode of the LEGO Legend of Zelda Custom Showcase Wave 8 tier based off Tears of the Kingdom, where we are turning your favorite moments from the game into custom sets, where today we're looking at Z0081 with 786 pieces. This is going to be dun, 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 the Lost Grandia Showdown, based off, of course, the Fire Temple from uh, Tears of the Kingdom and includes Marble Goma, as you can see on our wonderful box art here. Now, I should preface this really firstly because this is potentially the most important, not the most important one of the more interesting and more rich sets that we have in the way to take a look at not only have we got a dungeon expansion a boss and a couple of really cool characters but we've got an entirely new way to play with not just this but all of the tears of the kingdom sets not to mention a banner some really interesting play features a secret stone a sage uh, and of course a boss as well um, and just other cool stuff to take a look at so come with me as we dive on through it but as for the general information for this we have uh, a set for ages eight and up this is lost grandia showdown with 786 pieces retailing for 79.99 great British pounds containing two figures uh, but also three brick built characters mostly made up with the constructs here and of course Goma adding towards that camp. I've got a quick description for you before we open up the box and get right in because we have a lot to cover. Enter scorching depths and ride perilous tracks in the all new Lego Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom playset. Fight your way to Yonobo's secret stone by launching a special ability at the monsters with the new launcher. Take down marbled Goma and build lava platforms to traverse the fiery pools surrounding the central tower before hitting the gong and lowering the gate to reach the stone and loot the treasure within, combined with other Tears of the Kingdom sets for expanded play. And that will become super, super evident as we progress through our showcase today. So, and opening up that box, we'll reveal that we have eight numbered bags and three instruction manuals splitting up the build. Inside that first one, we've got a couple of miscellaneous builds, including the first section from the Fire Temple, uh, the Goron Launcher, and Marbled Goma as well. We will see that bag one starts the build for Marbled Goma, building the base, and bag two finishes that off with the legs. We also have in this book bag three, which gives us our Ember Link, uh, Ember Armor set uh, for the Bag three, which gives us our Ember Armor link and starts the build for the first section over on the left. Bag four gives us the launcher, Yonobo, and finishes off that left section before moving into our second instruction manual for the central section of this build, which starts in bag five, finishes in bag six, where you also build the uh, Captain Construct 2. Then into the third book, which does the longer rain, uh, minecart section. And in this one, we have bag seven and eight, bag seven starting the build and bag eight, finishing it off along with uh, the Soldier Construct 3, which finishes the build, which altogether looks like this. And there's plenty to take a look at. Starting, of course, with Marble Goma. We're going to jump in there to begin with. Um, so this build is, of course, based off the boss from the Fire Temple. He would have a printed eye on a Technic Ball piece in the middle. And you can see that across his legs, we have the marble texture of the marbled rock roast, but also uh, the boulders that he would shoot out. Now, these legs actually serve a couple of purpose. Another main play feature here, you've got some articulation abilities so they can go up and stomp down like they do in game, but they can also be knocked off. They're easily removable so that you can sort of fell his legs down to make the, bid uh, the middle of his body come down so that Link can climb on and smack away at the eye. This is a really cool feature because it actually ties into the main gimmick of the set. We'll be back there in just a second. Um, but the legs can also be detached because if you fight Goma in the depths, you can use his uh, sort of legs as part of a hammer build using a fuse. So just like um, how we have plenty of other fuse items across the other sets, Goma's leg is another fuse option for you guys if you purchase this one. Uh, beyond that, of course, Goma is supposed to be displayable separately from the set, can be marched around and walk uh, and so on, uh, as it's one of the major bosses from the game. And all of those are going to be replicated in our Tears of the Kingdom wave. Uh, beyond that, it's pretty straightforward. It's a nice addition to the build. Um, and as I said, it ties into our gimmick. Now, going back over to the main set, I think the first thing I want to do is explain the gimmick. But in order to do that, uh, I show you that this set has a fair bit of modularity. It's three main sections, as you saw in the instruction manuals. It can be sort of folded in and outwards. The play features work best if it's in a straight line, but for display on a desk and so on, it can sort of bend in and outwards. And this is because this set acts like a shooting gallery. Now, many of you will be familiar with the Sonic sets that launched earlier last summer um, in 2022. And what they included was this Speed Sphere launch. Launcher. Uh, this has been basically a build has been copied here uh, and replicated into the Goron launcher with a brand new print over the top of it, but just some recolored parts for the Technic elements. Yeah, I know it looks a little bit weird, but just, just trust me here. Uh, and this is designed to launch the same spheres that you can launch Sonic with, except for uh, you can fit Yonobu in them. And this explains why all the Gorons in this wave have had to be minifigures instead of big figures like I know you guys would have preferred. It's so that Yonobu could fit inside the ball. Now, 
Octane, you're asking why would you want to launch Lenovo at this set? Well, obviously this is replicating his Sage ability from in-game and across this set, there are many different aspects which require you to knock things off. For example, on the top of the main building, we have a pedestal here where you can place Marbled Goma. The reason, although this doesn't sort of appear here in-game, the idea is that you can place Marbled Goma or one of the other construct enemies up here and you can knock um, him off, which will bring him down to the ground, and then you can launch your Nobo at the Marbled Goma again, knocking the legs off this time to bring Marbled Goma down to the ground. But that's not all. How do you get up there? Well, I'm going to show you later, but we can build ramps in this set, just like we have in the Sonic set, to launch the Speed Sphere, or um, like Boulder Power, whatever you want to call it, into the air. We'll come back to that though. Uh, throughout the set there are other couple of things that you can launch. Not only do we have the two constructs which can be positioned throughout the set for you to, well, launch you Nova know, and knock them down uh, for extra points, but the main gate pe play feature on the central section is actually activated using your Nova as well. So it's spread all throughout the set. And at the very end of today's video we're going to be looking at uh, the other sets throughout the wave such as Secret Cave Discovery and the Bedrock Bistro which your Nova can also be integrated with, but more on that later. Let's talk about this set up close and personal. So starting off on the section over the left you can see that this is sort of the mm, the weirdest of the three sections. It's sort of dominated by this larger tower structure which is built majoritively in dark red. You can see that there's a little bit of uh, light bluish grey mixed in and that's actually not uh, because pieces are locked. It's to represent the sort of Zonai architecture that bleeds through. The Fire Temple is another example of a Zonai build that's sort of been uh, sort of tainted by one of the regions. So while a lot of the rock work is dark uh, or dark red and then a little bit of gold there is still some of that uh, light bluish grey that seeps through. You'll notice that on the top of this build, before I explain what's going on, uh, there is the banner, and the banner is another one of our wave long gimmicks that have been included here. This is the Goron banner and represents the third one that we can add to Lookout Landing. Now Lookout Landing is the set that, from this wave that can be combined with many, many different other aspects in order to expand your play experience. And if you own this set, you can show that you've recruited the Gorons and got the Sage of Fire by adding the Goron banner to Lookout Landing. And we've now got three of the four, only one more still to come. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm sure. But uh, that banner is sort of your collectible item for this set alongside one other. But you'll see that just below the banner, there is in fact a hatch, and that is because there's a play feature leak uh, latched into this build. We can see that there's lava pouring off the side, you've got some ruined into there, and there's some lava seeping out of this build. And there's actually a hydrant here, which is simulating a water being poured onto this lava. Uh, here and this is supposed to sort of give you some environmental storytelling for this play feature that if you push this lever in from the back a lava platform is going to shoot right out as if it's being formed from the water touching the magma whatever you need to, to do to float it in your imagination why are we shooting at magma platforms here? Well, this is actually a dispenser to create these platforms. And a big part of the Fire Temple's puzzles is using these platforms uh, to create bridges and ramps for Yonobo or for Link to uh, sort of uh, traverse the dungeon. And that's such a big part of the Fire Temple that I thought we would include it here. Now this mechanism actually produces six platforms and these can be used in a variety of different ways. You can actually reload them into the mechanism using the hatch at the top and then just pump them all out um, as if you're forming them from the hydrant and then they can all be attached. You'll see that they've got uh, bracket studs on one side. This means that we can attach two together like this to make a small ramp, or you can use three to make a slightly longer ramp with a, a lower angle, or you could invert this to have a very short ramp, but it'd be very, very steep, and that wouldn't be particularly useful for play with, this, uh, with the speed sphere. And obviously these ramps could be used, uh, is what's used to launch you know, at those higher angles to get, say, up to marbled goma or the constructs at the top, and what really adds to that extra bit of play. But of course, these aren't the only structures. We have a bridge here, uh, uh, which you can see is being used to access higher levels of the dungeon, maybe from uh, the floor or cross big gaps of lava. This could be a lot of fun for kids to make it like tipple, topple, and then maybe break in the middle. And you can even recreate um, some other of the Zonai uh, schematics, such as the Ascend platform here, which yeah, it doesn't work like the feature does in Look Atlantic Secret Cave Discovery, but it's another interesting use of the parts here. And of course, there are many, many more. You can do whatever you like with these six pieces. But the main goal, of course, is to provide ramps for the Unobo feature, um, as well well as a fun traversal mechanic that will remind people of the fire temple. And that's pretty much it for this left hand section. So let's move over to the middle one next. The middle one, as I mentioned, is starts off at the top where you can place marbled goma. There's also a piece of roller coaster track up here, uh, which connects to the far right section, but I'll come back to that when we talk about it. The majority of this one is sort of taken up in height, sort of to give that more visual imposition to, to the fire temple, but is also taken up largely with this play feature here. This is based off the main section of the dungeon where 
you lower the gate, which is the whole goal, in order to enter the marbled uh, Goma arena, which is too small to fit marble Goma, but is where the secret stone is stored. So there's a lava gap, which uh, is this metal gate needs to be lowered over to, to push down. Now, obviously you could just lower it, but this one takes a, a leaf out of the action battle sets from Star Wars in 2019's book uh, and has another Unova feature. So this golden dish here is representing a gong, uh, one of the five things that Unova has to hit. And of course, if you were to hit it either with your finger or by launching an oboe, as is sort of the, the skill level of challenge here, uh, the gong will fall backwards, which pushes the lever into uh, the gate, uh, making the gate fall forward and providing you access to, uh, of to cross the lava and then see the secret stone, which is resting on a pedestal very similar to how the one in the Wind Temple and uh, the Great Sky Island set were presented. And this is, of course, Unobo's Stone of Fire, one of our eight collectibles in this set. There are a couple of other details here. On the inside of the second floor, we've got two crates, one of which contains a weapon. It's supposed to be a representation of the Cobble Crush or a Boulder Breaker, whatever you want. Give it to Unobo or fuse it uh, as anything else can be done. And on the other side, we've got some diamond and some zonite, some just some crafting materials, and these can be spread across another chest that appears in the set as well. Um, moving on to the third section, then on the right, this one does connect more intricately with the middle section. I mentioned that roller coaster track uh, at the top of the middle section, and that is because we have this big sort of teetering section. Um, a roller coaster that can swing between three positions. Here you can see it's lower on the left, so you could access uh, your Nova Secret Stone and then fly up to the very top. You can see it's level in the middle for another possible feature. And then we've got high left, low right, which connects in with some low track on the right hand side and also with this high piece over on the left. And this is supposed to recreate, of course, the, the modular track sections in the dungeon that can sort of flip and uh, switch between the two, but also just a fun play loop for kids to like put Link on a cart and sort of swing him between the two sides. It also sort of links all the traversal and passageways different, uh, differently together and provides you more options to move between the rooms, which is something I always appreciated about um, older sets like Lord of the Rings. Um, I particularly, the um, Orc Forge comes to mind as there's lots of different ways to, to go between the different sections here. So uh, let's start now. If we board from the middle top, we can ride down to the bottom right where there is a section of track that runs under this section. Not too much going on here. You can see there's a sort of section of uh, stone above the lava. You've got a shovel down here, some mining tools, a little bit of space to fight, but really this is just sort of the entrance track or minecart storage area. Um, round the back, this is of course where it connects to the big long straight section. You've got some flames down here underneath sort of the floating elements of this dungeon. Um, and if we actually go up to the floor above, you can see that we've got this secondary track which deliberately does not connect to the main swivel piece. And this is done because there's a lot of tracks in this dungeon where constructs actually ride alongside you and that can be recreated here, as you can see in this image. So as you're sort of tiltering your main uh, car backwards and forwards, you can have the other one sort of running and scooting into the building uh, with a construct. And actually you can hijack this cart. So say if you ride the front track into the station, you can then get on it and then ride it around the back of this floating building, um, which is where you could get off to get to this treasure chest on the top. There's also some studs up here, uh, deliberately placed jumpers for the attachment of constructs. This is one of those spots which I mentioned which would be great for a you Unova know, feature, meaning that they would only be loosely attached, meaning that he will send them absolutely flying when you uh, hit the shot. This building is actually supported using the support stand piece, recolored into dark bluish grey, a recolor that I'm almost sure would be out if uh, in the timeline of this set. Uh, and as mentioned, this is floating above lava using making use of the big flame pieces, which is really fun to be able to use stuff like that in these sets. So that's pretty much the main three sections. However, I'm sure there are a couple of extra things that I need to show you. And those come namely in the more form of Unobo features. So as I mentioned, this could, other sets in this wave have been designed with this feature in mind. And I know that might seem hard to believe, but it's true. There are other sets that have been set up as shooting galleries. Now, obviously this doesn't mean that you can't play with them normally, but the idea is that these ones are more compatible with the uh, speed sphere. So for example, up here we have uh, Z069, this is Ericuda Attack. We have four monsters in this set uh, and a couple of loose positions for Unova to be launched at Constructs resting on the uh, lower platforms to have a Bow Koblen on this angled one, which could even act as a ramp, or you could build, uh, bring ramps across from uh, the Fire Temple. And of course you've got the Ericuda as the high target to launch off the top. But with variety, it's just a quick display which you could definitely shoot creatures off. Perhaps a little bit better of an example is Zora's Domain. You've got a couple of angled surfaces here uh, and different monsters to hit. Specifically, the Gloom Hands would like sort of like flick backwards. Sludge Light would be good for this too. A couple of platforms for Lazalfos to look back on. And actually, I think the better example of um, Zora's Domain would actually be the Sky Islands, although those would be really, really tr tricky shots to land. So you might want to do some modifications for something like that. 
another great example here that's been on your screen for a while now is the Cleok. This one less so. Um, this is also launched at like looking at the heads. This is the weakest one. It doesn't really fit into the same concept as the others, but the idea would be that the heads are on ball joints, meaning that if Nunobo hits them, they will fall back and it would be like knocking the heads down, um, ready to be uh, like attacked on the ground. So there's definitely fun to be had with that as an option too. Potentially even as a two player fun, someone could like launch the Gliok around and um, you can try and hit it. The biggest and best example I think comes in the form of Secret Cave Discovery though. So here the entire cave segment was built in mind around this feature, meaning that you can like launch your Horoblins at, um, you can launch your Nobo at the Horoblins and like like to send them flying, specifically when of course attached to uh, Lookout Landing above, you can launch him and knock them off the ceiling. Uh, you have the Bokoblins and the Boss Bokoblins also in the cave and also the like like around the side, which I don't have a picture of, but these are all things that were considered uh, so that you could have a shooting gallery like experience, like the action battle sets from 2019, like Link's Crossbow Training and um, uh, like sort of a carnival mini game. Really, like, that's what we're thinking of, like a shoot 'em up carnival mini game. And I mentioned it last time with Bedrock Bistro, but the same is very much true here. A lot of the design work behind the cave and why it's a little disappointing is so that you can launch him at the Horriblins in the back of this cave. Also another set with roller coaster track, or even Addison. I should really, really mention that. You can see that very clearly here. Uh, there is nothing to stop you launching, uh, you know, at the Addison sign and utterly destroying it. So he's very, very versatile. And there is one more set that will include the Unova feature specifically designed for it coming up in uh, the rest of Wave 2. Or any one more. Some of the other ones in this part of the wave are mm, less, less conducive to this, but that's still like a decent six or seven of the sets that would be really fun to incorporate this different style of play into, which would be great. Um, but that's it. It's time to take a look at some figures. So, first figure in this set is, of course, the Ember set Link from Tears of the Kingdom. This is one of the three elemental sets. We've seen the Frostbite one appear in uh, the legendary Stormwind Dark, and we will be seeing Thunder uh, set, the Charge set, I should say, appearing elsewhere. Just like you saw with the Frostbite, this one is using the energy effect piece on the base to represent the charge attack that's coming out from the, the base. He's actually got a Horriblin hammer, and that is included in this set and can be found in one of the chests, which is a fused weapon with a Horriblin horn from, I believe, the normal, like, normal colored Horriblins. He's also got an energy effect from Flame piece and is using a recolor of the fawn headpiece with trans orange to represent the energy version of the powered up horns here. Yeah, I know they're not perfect, but it would do the job. Face print here with the correct makeup and then of course accurate torso and leg printing. We're really going all out for these elemental figures. Next up is, you know, the other main character of the set and of course he's concluding his secret stone. Uh, just like the other Gorons, I know it's not ideal, but he's compromised into a figure form. We're using the minion's tuft of hair to be just the closest thing. He's using one of the new medium skin tones in the middle, got dark red printing for his sort of belt here. No weapon in his hand right now, but there was that boulder breaker included in the set, and he is using a turtle shell piece uh, from the Ninja Turtle sub theme uh, to create a, sort of a, a more rockier back for him. Although again, it's very, very limited by the fact he has to fit in that speed sphere for the entire purpose of gimmick of this set to work. And as mentioned, of course, this is another set with a secret stone. Collecting them all as we do, we've now had Roro Stone of Light in Z0074, Great Sky Island. We've had Tulin Stone of Wind in Z0078, the legendary Stormwind Dark, and Side on Storm uh, Stone of Water in Z070, the uh, Zora's Drain Muktorok Menace. This is now our fourth one in um, Los Garandia Showdown, and we still have uh, Riju, Minoru, the uh, Ganondorf Stone, and of course, um, uh, Sonya's Stone still to go. So halfway through the stone collections, uh, not many sets left. So we're going to be seeing a lot of stone sets coming up towards the end of the game. But let's move on. Soldier Construct 3 is up next. This is a build we've actually seen before in Ericuda Attack, so I won't spend too long on it. It's making use of my new piece. Again, if you want to learn more about that, go check out that specific video. And of course, can hold different things in the hands, but nothing in this particular set. Uh, the sword piece at the top, which can of course be attached to any fuse you like, and then the printed pieces as you would expect. Same goes for Soldier Construct 2. This one's actually exclusive to this set, although the Soldier Construct variants, or I should say Captain, uh, um, are very, very similar to each other, just using a different horn piece uh, containing the bow uh, in the hand over there and then a hand free to include any weapon you like and attach them on there. That is the joy of the constructs. Again, same printed pieces as any other Captain Construct, very similar to the Captain Construct 1 that we saw in Taurus Domain, Mark Rock Menace. We will see the version 3 at some point. Uh, next up we have Marble Goma. This is the buildable character of the set. We've already talked about it at length, but here you can see the printed eye. All the different rock details uh, and makes up two bags of the set. Again, I'll highlight that the legs could not only be easily knocked off for play with the Yonobo feature, but also turned into a fused weapon, which is great. It looks pretty accurate, happy with the color scheme. I know people will debate the rock, uh, marble rock roast technique, but I'm being consistent across the uh, Bistro set, which included um, edible marble rock roast using dark 
gray and red printing. So same thing here. I'm actually really fan, a big fan of how the sort of the, the marbled effect worked and I really like how the shaping came out overall. Um, another great boss to add to the lineup, which of course you can see here, we've now got three of them. I'm loving all of them, you know, if I could have all of them in real life, I would. It's a shame that the Mark Truck Shark is a specialized piece. Maybe one day we'll get him, but still two more to come. And no, Cogger is the best, but the other two are still really, really solid. So, oh, three, who am I kidding? We've got um, our sixth boss down at the bottom there, hiding away. But again, progress is being made through all of these different collectibles that can happen across the sets. Well, that is actually gonna do it for all uh, that I have to show you in Lost Grandia uh, Showdown. It's a packed set with um, not only so much unique uh, sort of flavor to itself, but also so many great inclusions from the Tears of Kingdom lineup. Of course, we have stuff like the Secret Stone and the Banner, which have been making appearances across all the sets, finishing our Construct lineup with our Soldier Construct 2, and of course, Marbled Goma. But then of course, the entirely unique gimmick of the Yonobo thing, which is specifically best showcased in this set, but also the very playable different aspects. I particularly love how the, the themes like the Minecart and the Ramp and Bridge building came across from features in the dungeon into this. and. Remember that this is in wave eight, so the dungeon builder system is actually over by this point, so this isn't designed to connect with those, but it's really showing another way that dungeons can be explored in physical sets other than just combinable modules like I'll be doing for the majority of this showcase in waves one through seven. So interesting to see, I think potentially one of the better executions of a dungeon outside of a dungeon builder system. Storm and Dark is incredibly unique and Zora's Domain I didn't really touch on it, but as a main dungeon set, I'm really happy with the aesthetic and sort of the vibes that this gets across. And it does definitely feel more like a play set to me, which I'm pleased of. But there's just so much jammed into this one, even from the inclusion of stuff like the Zona devices, like the Hydrant and another elemental outfit as well. So much, so much going on. And yeah, it feels like an empty space as well. But anyway, let me know your thoughts down below and whether you're impressed with the um, Yonobo feature. I've been holding this one and hyping it up for a while, so it's probably fallen flat of your expectations. But um, beyond that, we are progressing slowly through part two. Now, next week, of course, um, the video is going to be a little bit late because there's a special kind of holiday coming up that you guys will see on the channel very, very soon. Um, and uh, that will make the video just a couple of days late. I'm sure you know why. But after that, uh, I've got a castle update, a remaster of a Wave 2 set before we move on to, of course, the next uh, custom set, which for your reference, although it's a long way away, will be 83 base. This is the other one that has, you know, integration it's pretty clear what this is but i'm very very excited to finally actually have a set that's based on this area as we take another break between going to dungeons to do some more side content explore a little bit and this is another big one that finishes stuff up but i'm particularly excited about this um yeah, I think you'll like it. Let me know, of course, all your thoughts down below and where we're at with the showcase. As I promised, Castle is coming very, very soon. I know you're all eagerly waiting, but I just love the showcase even more uh, than all of that. So uh, I'll see you again very, very soon and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.